here, student manager eight. Matthew, we've been talking about this for so long that it's finally here is very appropriate. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Very well. I think we're all set. Take it away. OK. Well, uh, first of all, the big deal with student manager eight is that it is SQL Server compatible. So what that means, and you can still use your Visual Fox Pro tables if you want to, but then there is a SQL Server um, kind of a module or add-in to Student Manager 8 to allow you to use SQL Server. Um, you do need to use Server or SQL Server 2008 or newer, uh, preferably 2012. All of our testing has been in 2012, but um, I haven't used any anything um, that uh, that isn't in 2008. But uh, we do have a conversion routine that will move your uh, Visual Fox Pro tables over into SQL Server if you do want to go this route. So uh, that is already set. Uh, we've tested it several times. Um, so that that is ready to go uh, when we when we launch. There is a twenty nine ninety five upcharge to go to SQL Server, and that um, yeah that that's kind of when I'm talking about a module. Yeah, this is this is the add on price for that module. Uh, there is no charge. Um, to stay with your Visual Fox Pro tables, and of course there is, you know, just as long as you're current on your um, uh, SMA. So, uh, one of the big, well, there's several advantages to going to SQL Server. One is that you no longer have a two gigabyte limit on table sizes. Not that there are many of you out there that have hit this limit, but there are, there have been a couple of times in the past where that has been an issue. Um, with SQL Server, there is more security options in there. Uh, it is definitely uh, tied in with your Windows network, um, which which helps it make it be quicker as well. But um, it, it uses your Windows login and things like that to, to connect into the database. So, um, uh, with Visual Fox Pro, you know somebody hacks your server. They've got the tables there. They could potentially read your data. There's another layer with SQL Server, where they also have to hack SQL Server in order to get at your data. With that, uh, also SQL Server has advanced backup routines that can be automated and whatnot. Um, uh, there's even like a, a like a flash backup routine and things like that. Uh, if you guys have a DBA on campus, they can go on and on about uh, the advantages of SQL Server. So um, do ask your IT if they already have a server that is uh, set up for SQL Server. I'm I'm betting most most larger campus uh, campuses especially will have a SQL Server. Uh, if not, um, you can certainly uh, get a license for uh, SQL, uh, SQL Server Standard or SQL Server Express. Express is the free version, so it's limited, um, especially with table size, or the whole database size can't be above 4 gig, but uh, it also has some limitations on speed. Advantages of Student Manager 8 in general, not just the SQL Server uh, module, uh, it is going to be quicker. I have been doing a lot of work reworking all the guts of Student Manager uh, so that we are using what are called remote views. Uh, rather than an entire table being opened and copied across the network, and you're manipulating the data there, and then that entire table gets pushed back to the server uh, when you save a record. 
uh, that's not going to be the case anymore. You're still going to have, you know, your lookups are still going to bring across data, but it's kind of a, it's not the whole table. It's just the, a look-see. Um, so that will be quick, and you can search uh, through things. Find the one record you want to manipulate, and then we are buffering just with that one record rather than the whole table uh, so that you can make your changes. Then when you fire the save, it's only saving back that one record back to the uh, underlying table. So with handling the, these records one at a time, uh, we're, we're going to get an increase in speed, especially on the course lookups. Uh, just prepare, prepare for that. Uh, the ActiveX calendar in Student Manager, like you on the course screen, and I believe the holiday screen is the only place in uh, 7.2a and earlier. Um, those were the only places that had it. In some server environments, especially with Microsoft, uh, clamping down on ActiveX, um, those buttons were not working anymore. Finally, I found a nice tool that can replace those ActiveX calendars, and we're using that instead. And I will demo that when uh, we start demoing Student Manager 8. Uh, speaking of demoing, I have a bunch of new features in Student Manager 8 that I'm excited to show you. Um, before we get into that, though, there are some disadvantages of Student Manager 8. There are several features that we are displacing. Um, this includes, the biggie is going to be archiving. Uh, archiving is no longer going to be available with Student Manager 8. Uh, we may bring that back in the future, but for the initial release of 8, that's, that's not going to happen. We do have a tool that will combine your archive data back into your live data. And obviously, with the increase in speed in Student Manager 8, archiving isn't an issue. Uh, if you are hitting the 2 gig uh, table size, then obviously you will want to go to SQL Server. Uh, then we you know, unarchive you and move your data up to uh, SQL Server. Uh, that way you're uh, not running out of space. Uh, Quickie is a um, import routine. It mass registers people into one course from an Excel spreadsheet. Well, the speed registration entry has been made to do that in 7.2a, uh, so we've decided just not, not to update that program anymore. Um, so there's that. Also, Utility W, we're not updating anymore as well. We do have, like the combined name, you know, mass combined name routine is now in Student Manager, and I will show that uh, here in a minute when I demo other features. Uh, we also have the, um, well, archiving is also in Utility W. We're no longer archiving, so that's no longer needed. The uh, the dupes um, and orphan routine where it cleaned up orphan records. That has been in Student Manager um, 7.2a for a while now, so that um, that's already been taken care of. So uh, just, just want to make you aware of that up front. Um, also with SQL Server, when you delete a record, it's gone for good right then and there. I do have Student Manager set up where you hit the delete button, it shows the record as deleted, but once you hit that save button, you're moved off into another record. You're, that record's gone. Sayonara. You can't get it back. Now, you, there are, you know, the, the, with the, the advanced backups that SQL Server does, you can roll back transactions, um, things like that, but that's not dealing with Student Manager anymore. That's dealing with your DBA 
and uh, in SQL Server. So I uh, just want to make you aware, hey, if you, you are not, aren't sure um, that you really need to delete this record, make a backup first, then go delete your record. And that way, if uh, we need to, we can pull it from your backup um, and, and get that record back. But uh, also, there are those of you that have custom programming, it may or may not be compatible with Student Manager 8, especially if you move to the SQL Server version. Please, please, please check with your technician before doing the upgrade to 8, and we can double check and make sure that your custom programming will work. Uh, there may be an upcharge to convert custom programming, but we're going to handle that as a case-by-case -case basis. Let's start looking at features. First of all, most most of these, uh, or I should say most of what you're going to see with Student Manager 8, there isn't a big change with how it looks, with the exception of this first feature. And that is a new, uh, the new search routine. So if I go into look up name or look up course, I'm just going to start with name. Uh, new screen here with a search box up here and then everything in here. Uh, on my slide, I think I said it slices, it dices, and it sorts. Uh, when I say it slices, when I start typing a name, so I'm going to start looking for Havlicek, H-A, you'll see that it's making the list shorter to whatever matches, and it matches on all these fields that are in purple, or I think it's more of a maroon, but uh, and it highlights what it's what it's finding. So H A V, and this is a contains search. It's not like I can do S O N. So any name that contains S O N or firm name here has S O N here on Jackson Community College. Um, with it dicing, I hit the space bar, and it's starting to do a second search as I type. So if I type T, T, in Butterfield Coversion, Paul, it's finding the TT and the SON in the last name. In my name, it finds it in the last name, or the SON in the last name, and the TT in the first name. So that's why it's showing both of these records. Um, so there it's dicing. Um, slicing, dicing, and sorts. Each of, so with, with each of these columns, and this is any column, and there are more columns over here to the right. Uh, so if I want to order by the social security number, and once I clicked it brought me back over here to the left, but you can sort on the first name order. I don't know why you'd want middle name or suffix, but firm order. Um, so if you want to see all the A square systems people together, um, you can do it city order, whatever. Whatever is helpful to you to order it by. Also, like last name I clicked in once, it's alpha A to Z. Click in it a second time, it's now Z to A. So. One last thing with this, the old find screen, you couldn't resize. This one you can. And by the way, and I like it just keeping it blown up. I can close this now, hit my find again. It remembered the size that I left it. Now there is like a certain maximum. Uh, once it hits a certain maximum, it just parks it up in the left corner or upper left hand corner, um, but otherwise it will try to center it uh, if you're keeping it a smaller window. But other than that, you can resize it and just leave it maximized, which is the way I like it. But So that's the new search. Like I said, that's the biggest visible change you're going to see in Student Manager 8 from uh, Student Manager 7.2a. Uh, I did do some changes with the buttons here in the middle.
especially you see right in the very middle a new button called Favorite Reports. And this is also under Reports, Favorites, or Control F1, however you want to do it. Uh, this allows you to define 10 reports, and this is on a user-by-user -user basis. So your 10 most ran reports, it allows you to choose them and then one button to run it. So you, you pick an area. So maybe I want, I don't know, a courses report, um, course income summary. The, I, don't, I only have one additional report. I can choose the default report here, income summary and choose my query. Course between two dates, course code equals, um, yeah, we'll do between two dates. I'm going to go ahead and save it, although hitting run report will also save it once you make your changes. But I'm going to run the report. It does still bring up the, the print options dialog here, or the, not really print options, the options dialog. Uh, so if you want to export to file, include, canceled, uh, whatever else you need to do. Uh, this, the default additional report thing is just being ignored because you chose it on the favorite report screen. Um, I'm just going to leave everything alone here, run it. It, uh, it skipped over the query chooser and just brought me into the, the one query that I'm wanting to run, 01, 01, 2000. 2014. I don't know if I have, I think I do have quite a bit of 14. Okay, Got so it. next thing I want to show, fee specific memberships. For quite a while now, let me get into a membership course here. Oh, let me maximize this again. Uh, membership, Ace Club. For quite a while now, we've been able to do memberships based off of the member code. So you enroll somebody in here, uh, for those of you who aren't using the membership system yet, um, you enroll somebody in here, it gives them this as their membership code. And that way they can go in and based on that code, if you can restrict classes to only members enroll in those classes or have special fees and have them um, um, uh, only get those fees on courses. So uh, that's been there forever. Well, not forever, since 7.2a, I think. Um, what I've added in 8 is the ability to, on a fee-by-fee -fee basis, add a membership code right here. If I leave it blank, it's still going to assign the main membership code, but let me add add main fee. Let's do an Ollie membership. Should be in here. Ollie members get this at 100 bucks. I don't like them as much as my Ace Club people. Uh, set an expiration date. Um, still 12:31:14. But over here on membership code, instead of give it, giving them the Ace Club member. I'm going to give them the Ollie membership code. That way you don't have to have a course for Ace Club members and a course for Ollie members. You could just set up one membership course and based on if they become an Ace Club member or an Ollie member, they get that code. Mass combined names. I promised you earlier that we had a new feature that replaced Utility W. Uh, this is under Tools, Data Cleanup. Combine names. And right now it's given you just a few options. We'll probably add more later, but we do have user defined, so if there, you, you can pretty much do uh, searches on people uh, based on anything you want to define, um, which, yeah. Uh, for my first try here, I'm just going to click email address and see how many people uh, in 
my demo database have the same email address? Well, there's only two people, me and Jenny Call. And they definitely look like two different people. Why do they have the same email address? Who knows? So probably wouldn't want to combine in that situation. Um, but let's do portion of first name, full last name, address, and zip. And this time I'm going to hit the preview combine button. The first time I just reported on people because I just wanted to see them. But preview combine. It will first ask you if you've made a backup. So as a hint, make a backup before you run this utility. Um, I'm going to pretend that I've made a backup. I'm going to say yes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit zero. It's asking how many characters do you want to match the first name on. Well, I don't care about the first name. I just want to see people with the same last name and address. So. Okay. Da, da, da. I should have some people. We should have music playing here. We should have some yeah. exciting Jeopardy music or something like that. I don't. Maybe I accidentally combined my people as I was testing beforehand. Okay. Let me go. Have. So I'm rerunning the address or the uh, email address one because apparently I combined duplicates earlier without meaning to. Um, so again, it found me and Jenny Call. Uh, at this point, if I, well, I know these two people aren't duplicates, so I can uncheck one or both, and when I hit done, they won't be combined, um, or just leave them checked, and it will combine. The, the big advantage of having this in Student Manager is it will keep or it will um, put in the note the, um, the sort of the information from the evil twin. So you've got the, the, uh, the oh, what all does it put? Name, address, email address, the old ID all stored in the history uh, and that's been you know when you do a manual combine in student manager uh, it has been doing that since I don't know midway through 7.2 but um, now that we've got the mass combine in here um, uh, this will also do that so and people want to see again how you got to that point Yes. Tools, data cleanup, combined names. Here's the, the duplicate cleanup utility that I was talking about earlier. Registration name IDs only and UDF duplicate. This is also I think everything you can't even access this area without being a level six, I think. Uh, on the credential tab, let me get off of employee. We're up here we're we're giving the, the record from the, the grid, we're putting it up into here so you can, so it's easier for you to edit it all since there's, you know, all these different fields and you got the notes field, which is forever and a day. Um, actually, I think it's only 100 characters, but anyway. Um, kind of a nicer look two things. Uh, what we've also done with this though is based on the type, depending on what type you choose, you can also s rename these fields. So if I go to an employee type or employee type, uh, it gives a higher and left for the date rather than date and date two as it normally would. Uh, also it hid a couple of the fields, the title and the code, are gone. Uh, employer, instead of institution giving credit, uh, instead of notes, I put it notes with attitude. And that is defined in the codes. Let me go to course, credentials, or names, testing, and certification types. Uh, if I go to my employee, employee type, 
uh, it's in this little detail box. And I've kind of put a little code here. Uh, this is the student manager student manager column name followed by a colon and then what you want to relabel it as. So every field that you want to use um, need to, you would want to put in here. And then of course any of the others that you just leave blank, it shows everything with the default labels on them. So this, this will help you um, differentiate from employee employment history, uh, from testing scores, from just certificates, um, what else you got, licenses, special skills, test scores, I think I already mentioned testing. Um, so all, all those could have custom um, labels and set up to differentiate from each other. Uh, so with very little information on the course at this point. I can just go in here and hit this new button. It says Gen Are You? Uh, because I don't have a begin date on the course, uh, it's asking for one now. I want to make it today. Oh, four thirty fourteen. Uh, okay. Uh, because I haven't defined the days of the week the course has met, I can now. I'm going to make this a five-day-a-week course. Done. Course total clock hours. That's the total number of hours that your uh, that this course is meeting. So basically, instead of getting a session number to generate the room use, I'm now basing it off of hours. Because I want to make the math easier. I'm going to make it, I don't know, 250. 250 total clock, clock hours. Hours per day, I'm just going to say one. Should be 250 divided by one. Should give me 250 sessions. If I hit OK, and it's generating, you can see in the upper right hand corner, it's bypassing holidays at this point. And probably for this test, I should have done less. But anyway, now it's put in 250, all those options that I put in. It went ahead and saved. The hours, though, does not save because you may have you know, different clock hours than actual credit hours. So that doesn't save. But um, especially for tech schools, I think this will be a lot handier to, to generate uh, your room use. And if I go in right now, um, all the sessions are set. They don't have a location yet or session time, but uh, I can set that on the course now and um, get that all set up and squared away for this new class that I'm building. Hopefully a little bit of time saver. Uh, I think it also goes through in, goes through generating, especially you know, so when you've got 250 sessions or you know, the bigger courses, or I should say longer courses, uh, it does go through it faster for you um, to do it this way. Date picker. Uh, speaking of which, while I'm here and thinking about it, instead of choosing or typing in a date on the course screen, you've got the new calendar display. Um, it defaults to today, but then you can switch months, you know, June 18th, voila. And I shouldn't have done it on a course with 250 review dates because now it's flipping through all the holidays there. But, oh, it's already done. OK. Um, I'm going to abandon, get out of here. With holidays, though, no. Next one is date picker on queries. Reports, well, let's just go back to favorite reports. Um, so if if I've got a query, I want to change this one to course begin date is within a range of dates. So any of these queries that have you know date you know um, with it, it's going to bring up 
when I get to it, the little calendar buttons on the query. So instead of having to type it, I can go back to January 1, 2014, pops it in there for you. And I can go to December 31st. Puts that in for you there. Hit OK. Yes, to the due paid. Runs my report now based on same old, same old. So instead of typing, if you'd rather use the little calendar display to pick your dates, it's there for you now. Uh, add a holiday. So here I've put the calendar button, but also there is a new box that says the through. So if I want to add a holiday like Thanksgiving, which is in November, I think this year it's November 27th. Uh, if you're having a break the 26th through the 28th, let me go ahead and choose the 26th. Notice it automatically pops the 26th into the second box. I'm going to click on my calendar here and choose the 28th. So now the conflict scheduler or uh, yeah, room use scheduler that checks conflicts will now look between these two dates. And if it, you know, so it's if it falls on the 26th, the 27th, or the 28th, it'll move it forward. And um, or if it's giving you the conflict warning, um, it'll it'll check the range of dates now. Um, so I can put in Thanksgiving. Kind of helps you, like spring break, things like that, where it's a longer period for your holiday. You can now specify a range of dates rather than one at a time putting them in. So hopefully that will make it easier for you um, doing that stuff. Uh, one of the new things, let me go to Kevin Cosner here. Um, in the star special button, one of the new things is there's a button that says make instruct. And this creates a instructor record from the name record. So if I make instruct here, to clone this student name and paste in user defined display on the register screen. For a long time, we have had on the name screen and the course screen, if I go to name UDFs, edit UDF display, you've got the three lines, and it shows up in the bottom left-hand corner. There's a fourth line if you don't use um, um, which one is it? Char? NM char one or something? Anyway. Um, You've got several lines where you could display, you know, what what you're wanting, you know, different things that you just may want to display down there. Um, on the course, we've had it in the middle right hand side. Uh, usually, it defaults to showing the fee, um, but now we've got it so that it shows on the register screen. And I have it showing using the add course function off of the course screen. I'm pulling in the course type. That way, when I'm looking up a registration here, I'll look up Costner. Okay, Costner. Pick on Kevin Costner again. So when I pull him up right here, it shows open. So this was an open course. Well, this is canceled. Um, let's see, this is also an open course. Is he in? No, all he's in is open courses. Okay. Uh, let's go find membership. I got a few people in here. Added at Reggie's. So Jason Jones, it shows membership here instead of open. Uh, that way when you're looking through these, well, Ace Club membership, obviously that's going to be a membership type course, but you know your online, your event, your workshop courses. Well, your workshop, you've got the whole workshop pick list down here, but um, you know to display different things, 
you can you can use this custom display. Maybe you want to show course hours or something, or I don't know, whatever whatever you want to show. And it doesn't have to be off the course screen. It could be off the name screen or you know one of these UDFs if you're wanting to show right here on the first tab or a couple of these UDFs. UDFs you got clear over here to fill up. So uh, you can display your custom information that you want to show on registrations. And that's a user by user preference. Uh, next thing. Longer names used to be Sam. It's only three letters: so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and it used to stop. Now it just keeps going and going and going. I think it's a thirty. Nope, it goes past thirty. Um, same thing with the last name, Andreessen. Yes, I want to change the first name. Oh, yeah. It keeps going and going and going. It stopped finally, but uh, so for your, if you've got international students, especially with those really long names, or you've got, um, who's that guy? Meta World Peace. If you've got him as a student. You can fit world peace for the last name and meta for the first name uh, in in the record now. So longer first and last name for you to uh, to fill out or fill fill up. Yes, I want to change. Um, so I'm still making features in between debugging Student Manager eight. Um, one of the things, though, that's not going to get done when Student Manager 8 releases, but I'm hoping June-ish to have done, is the idea of having unlimited user-defined fields. And kind of the background behind this, it's going to take whatever fields that you desire to have in there and be able, it, it's going to bring up a custom screen that is as long or as short as however many custom fields you you have defined and this is name you know it'll be a different one for names a different one for courses and a different one for register but it kind of this form kind of works like a web page so it, you know it expands longer and shorter depending on how many fields you've got set and you can you can fill in those fields and uh, uh, have have all that extra storage for whatever you uh, need to to uh, report out against. Um, there will be functions uh, to pull in these, you know, unlimited user-defined fields. Um, we'll use functions to be able to put them on reports and export them uh, when you want to export them to Excel. Or if you need to export them to Excel, um, and of course, I'm always making more and more new features, uh, and be doing that here before it releases, and again after it releases, still be making more features. Uh, release. We are looking at next week, May fifth, as early as May fifth. I when we originally started this, we started this back June or July. It was like July. A long time ago, it was a long time. Yeah, I think August. August, like the beginning of August, is when I actually sat down and really did a lot of coding for this. We were, we did a lot of prep work though in July. Uh, well, in June and June and July, and uh, when I say we, I mean Stein and I. Um, so. Uh, from now, from then till now, or when I when we first started this, I promised to have this done by June 30th. Well, we're going to beat that by quite a ways. Uh, hopefully, depending on how testing goes, obviously you've seen several bugs in this 
presentation that we'll have fixed by the time this rolls out. But sometime next week, we are looking to push this out, start start letting you guys get on it. Uh, with this, or with the Student Manager 8, we are releasing AceWeb 3.5, and it is the non-SQL Server version of AceWeb. Uh, that, and I'm not not exactly sure what all features are going to be in there, but uh, check out Cheryl's forum post for that. Um, AceWeb 4, which is the SQL Server version, is not ready. Estimating mid June to July 1, somewhere in there, uh, getting that done and fully tested and and ready for release. So if you are wanting to get on Student Manager 8 SQL Server version, if you've got AceWeb, you can't do that until AceWeb 4 is released. And we'll have to do both both upgrades and then the conversion into SQL Server about the same time. So that uh, that we'll need to do. Um, I put in here, watch for my form post for a full list of features. There are other features I didn't even mention that I have done already. I see that I say that with an evil grin. Um, so yeah, there there's more to come. Um, and we'll have that uh, I'll have every everything listed in my form post. So um, find us online, 